Hi guys, this is Tom. In this tutorial I'd like to show you how to make a hanger with an adjustment holding screw. It's gonna look roughly like this, so let's get started. Start by creating a new design and saving it. Let's call it the hanger with screw. There we go. Uh, and we want to quickly start by making a few parameters. So in modify the change parameters. I would highly suggest that when you make your own design just quickly sketch it up and write down as many parameters as you can. Uh, since that would be a really boring video I'm just going to show how it's done. So a very common parameter in here is going to be wall thickness sorry which we're going to set to 10 millimeters and uh, the screw hole diameter so screw diameter and we set that to 20 millimeters so that it's nice and big it just feels nice so these two parameters set you can use them everywhere and easily adjust simply going to modify change parameters so let's start off by creating a sketch since we're going to be doing it from the profile then we want to do it on the XZ on the or the YZ plane so once again create sketch origin XZ plane and just sketch out the rough outline you I would highly suggest you learn the shortcuts in this case L for line and let's ballpark draw it then we had an up I do not think. yes it's the holding area then up this area where the screw itself will be I did not let me finish drawing that. There we go. Now we're gonna add some dimensions. You always want to end with a completely black uh, sketch telling you that it's fully dimensioned and you cannot move anything anywhere. So that's under sketch, sketch dimension, and I just use the shortcut D. So this, 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 all of these things are mainly uh, wall thickness. So the distance from here to here is thickness you can see how suddenly sketching all these dimensions becomes easy and I can even reference them so when you uh, sketch out the dimension just click the dimension you want to reference there we go again wall thickness or you can type it out specifically the problem here is now everything references the single one but shouldn't be a problem few next things how long do we want the holding area to be so let's say I like the 30 millimeters I will want the I will want the screw area to be screw diameter but if it were just that the screw would fall out right so I need to add some tolerance which is going to be the wall thickness in my case and we're almost there, let's see, what else can move? Ah, we have to define how much area there will be over here. So let's see, I mentioned that. 30 seems like a nice compromise, but you just need to tailor that to your specific application. What else can we move? What I'm trying to do is just take these lines and just pull them. So we want this to be aligned with here so I just need to select these two edges and say that they're collinear that means that they are on the same uh, what to call it uh, the lines that go to infinity <laughs> haven't had math in a long time then this one seems to be moving up and so I could either define this wall thickness or again I can select this line and make them collinear so you can see that I'm making a slight difference from the old screw holder where here this was far away but that did not seem necessary so I'm just going to make them align so it looks a bit nicer last one we need to define this height and I think that 10 millimeters or the wall thickness is just fine so I can click this wall just explicitly give it 10 millimeters one interesting thing is if you want to change these parameters anytime later then you can go to modify change parameters 
and all the model parameters are there so you can actually easily change them from here and if you set them as user parameters you know which ones they reference so it's a bit easier to know which one is which uh, we could also add the fillets here but I'm gonna do that in the final thing let's stop the sketch we can create the extrusion so that's create extrude uh, we can do it with an E select the sketch and now once again because of the screw we have to make it screw diameter plus tolerance in our case the wall thickness so now we have the rough outline two more things for the very rough thing we need to add a hole and create the screw so we're going to create a sketch sorry not fillet we're going to create a sketch on this bottom plane I'm going to create a circle, sketch a circle anywhere. Uh, we tell it that it's the screw diameter. Now we need to dimension it, so that's D. Select the center point, wall offset. Once again, we said it was the screw diameter plus the wall thickness, and the whole thing divided by 2. Now we have it exactly in the middle. We can still move it in the x direction though, so we add one more uh, uh, dimension, and this is how far it should be from the x. Right? You can see that needs to be aligned to this edge. Select the center point, and we can reference this dimension. Now it's smack on in the middle. We now just need to extrude the hole out, so create extrude, E on my side, select it, we'll want to cut and we can put in the wall thickness or we can just manually pull it depends on how clean you want it to be you can see that it's selected red so we're cutting hole is there now let's quickly create the screw I'm gonna create another sketch this time on the XY plane because I want it uh, to be no, not on this plane. Let's delete that sketch. Or just undo. Undo. We want to create a sketch. Hide the bodies. On this plane, XY plane. Show the bodies. So we start by sketching a circle that's going to be the shaft. So we can say the screw diameter, there we go. Next we create the holder. I personally really like the polygon circumscribe polygon. So just select the center point. So we're going to make it just a little bigger. I see that 12 millimeters might be nice. There's the screw. Now we just need to extrude it. So we stop the sketch, extrude the shaft. So as for the height, we said that this area is this height is 30 millimeters so for ease we can just make it 30 millimeters or maybe 25 not to waste material and make it more screwed in show the sketch again we now want to extrude the bottom polygon and the shaft to have something to hold it by so let's say we're going to go into minus 10 millimeters looks a little thick minus 8 it's just perfect now we need to add the threads so under create thread create one thread don't forget to model it otherwise it will not print and you can see that it automatically selected the M20 size and the thread details ok we now can thread a shaft Again, model it, it is the exact same thing with a very basic thing. To pimp it up, we can add a few fillets. We go to. I find it easiest to pre select all the edges we want to fillet. So, this edge, I want to fillet. This edge, this edge, this edge, I'm holding down shift while clicking them. And I think over here, but not this bottom one so it doesn't slip out. There we go. Modify fillet. Let's 
pull it down so that it's just nice. How does that look? Let's not overdo it. Mm, that looks just nice. Although, this area looks now a little thick. So I can just go edit that in the initial sketch. And let's actually make it half of that. Let's say minus three. So, ah, that looks a bit better. I think I'll add uh, another fillet. No, I'm gonna leave it just like this. So there you have it. That's uh, this was a hanger with an adjusting screw. Last step, if you saw my previous videos, I like to align things so we can go create components out of everything. Select body, right click, create component. Let's call it name body. Create a component onto the other thing. Call it. If you create the components, you can use the joints. So now I'm going to assemble joint. The first thing you select is what's going to be moving. So I'm going to select the joint and the screw. Um, you want to select just in the center. There we go. Now we want. Wait, what did I do? Oh. Select the center point of this hole. If you can, if it keeps disappearing like here, right? You can show them, press control, and then it snaps to the shown ones. Select the middle. And I have a rigid connection, that's not the one we wanted. Select, we will want the... Is it a slider? Yes, it was a slider, correct. Okay. So there we have it. It doesn't really work with the threads right now, but that would be annoying. So if we ground the main body, I make it held in place. Ground. You can now take the screw, move it in and out. Just confirm our sizing. You can see it looks a little small. Let's just quickly update that. Select the extrude. I forgot about the wall thickness, so we can add that to that, and there we go. Now covers everything, and there it is. Maybe for another video, uh, is the structural weaknesses. If you print this and use this extensively, you'll find out, and especially if you put big loads on it, that this part is actually under a lot of stress and the whole thing will sort of open up so you can add some ribs or some other kind of uh, structural supports to keep it held but that's for next time thanks for watching if there's anything you'd like to see in a future video feel free to leave it in the comments and see you next time just a few quick notes on 3d printing three points i'd like to cover first is the uh, tolerances Typically when you have any moving parts that are supposed to assemble together in 3D printing you have to put tolerances there, i.e. you cannot match the dimensions. For my printer is for example 0.3 millimeters. I have a CETUS, but I found out that the thread tool which we used to create the screw and the screw hole, those actually print perfectly and they are just, uh, they print just nicely that there is enough friction that the screws actually hold in place, but you can still twist them. The next thing I'd like to tell you is uh, for th printing the screw, just print it on the bottom face, so it print upwards, you don't need any supports and it'll print just nice. And for the main body, make sure to print it on one of the side faces. Uh, you will need some supports inside the screw hole, but those are easy to remove and again they help the screw to hold in place. And second of all, if you were to print it uh, on the bottom face, I this one, because as you print upwards, the that is the weakest link in 3D printing. Uh, 
uh, in the Z direction. So this part, which is the most stressed, would just snap. So if you print on the side face, uh, <laughs> sad face, no, no, if you print on the side face, you're going to have highest chance of this uh, actually being able to support anything. Okay, see you next time.